forgive us what we tell you, and be with us about the center of our unite. In your question, I pray.
people. If Lauren Carter, the porter, would come and join us this evening. Lauren, would you come and join us and bring us a scripture reading? I told him I didn't want to use a pulpit and a plan to. The principal of the school is already worried because it's the same way got a preacher without a pulpit. So we're not going to be pounding on anything tonight. Good to see everybody. Plus, I can walk a little farther forward here, and I feel like this for a young man down front. He's a little nervous about stages. Because of the last ministerial alliance meeting, I did not show up and got voted to do this. <laughs> of course, that's the problem being the president, and uh, you know, that's that's really not a problem. I had already explained to him that we'd already kind of talked this out, and I was going to be the guest speaker tonight. And we did move it to Wednesday night because we felt like that the Sunday afternoon was going to be a difficult thing. And it, it is an honor to come to speak to this group of graduates tonight. Uh, we appreciate uh, them. I've had the opportunity of getting to watch them uh, quite a bit. Basketball, football, uh, a little baseball from a distance, uh, softball. Uh, it's a great group of kids. And, and I'm reflecting on them as kids, which are actually young men and women. Come Friday night, about uh, 10 o'clock, they get to join the rest of us in the world. What they're going to do, I don't know. I, I wanted to, I, I, I don't know. I did this, I, I was telling Kathy, my wife, I said, you know, 13 years ago, I preached the back Lord service in which my eldest son was a, a member of that class. And I used a, a, a story that I'm not sure if this generation really knows anything about it. It's been around forever. It's a little book that we started out. I started out in first grade. I entitled that message years ago, uh, the 14th grade, because uh, my kids went to kindergarten. When I went to school, they didn't want to start with us that early. Uh, and you just didn't start kindergarten back in those uh, days. And so I... Uh, entitled that message, but I started it out with a story about a, a, a particular book that maybe some of us will remember back in the first grade. It was something about Sea uh, Spot Run. Oh, y'all read that book? Wow. I was scared to death to use that story thinking that, oh, we've gone way beyond that because I saw a paper the other day where the Students here are going to be getting one of these things down here, an iPad. Folks, I, I'm from the old school. I've got one. You see it laying right there. I hope I remember it's there and don't step on it. But when I started school, it was a big cheap tablet and a number two pencil. It was about the size of my thumb. Anybody identify that with me tonight? Amen. Come on. I know you're already worried that I'm using a few illustrations and I haven't gotten started preaching yet. How long are we going to be here tonight? Uh, well, since I'm the president of the Ministerial Alliance, I can adjust this service to however long I want it to be. 
<laughs> and so we'll definitely be out of here before uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'm sure some of them get to school, some may have work, but I, I want to talk to the uh, students tonight, and, and I don't call it necessarily a preaching sermon tonight. I could do that. But I, I thought of the old story about Dick and Jane and, and, and all the stuff that went on and what these guys had come through over the last 13 years. You never give up on education, first of all. And, and I'm not going to try to tell you something you don't already know and probably haven't already heard. I was thinking to myself uh, over the last couple of days, I started writing this thing a couple of days ago about tonight. And, and I happen to remember that probably at this time of life, You've heard all of this stuff about, you know, now wisdom will tell you to do thus and so. Or this is a smart thing to do. Or you should do this, or you should do that. I'm not going to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. Matter of fact, the only reason I've got a suit jacket on tonight is because I knew you guys were going to be dressed. I really thought about coming in blue jeans and a, a flowery Hawaiian shirt that I'm not tucked in. And, and I thought, oh man, that wouldn't be fair to the senior class because they're going to be dressed up. I noticed the rest of you came as dressed as they did tonight. And uh, I, I just thank you for that. I, I'm just thankful you're here now. And one reason I keep moving up here, if you were sitting on the stage watching a little bit, and these guys will be sweat perspiration starts popping out on their foreheads and starts running down because it's hot back there. So I just came up here. But I want to talk to you guys about wisdom. Wisdom is an interesting story because a lot of people claim to have it. I began to read in the Bible about uh, a fellow by the name of Job. Remember when Job had all the difficulties? If you don't know anything about the Bible and you read the book of Job, Job's a guy that, he, he's not a young guy. I'm not going to preach about a young guy. I'm going to preach about an old dude because here's Job. I mean, his kids are grown. He's got grandkids. He's wealthy. He's got it made. He has nothing to worry about. And then all of a sudden, everything bad that could happen came to Job. I mean, he lost his family. He lost his, his, his livelihood. And some of you pay attention, especially you guys down here. Some of you young men think wives are great things. Girlfriends are wonderful. Be married as long as Job and everything's taken from you. And all God left him was his wife. And all she could do was complain. <laughs> Matter of fact, when he got that bad, she looks at him and goes, Hey, why don't you just kill yourself? You know why she wanted him to do that. There was nothing left to inherit. There was nothing else to get. If he dies in that culture, she could remarry. They didn't believe in divorce in those days, so she, if, if Job dies, she could still remarry and find some guy with money. Job said, no, I'm not going to die. That wouldn't be right. Wouldn't be the thing to do. So here's Job. He's lost everything. His friends come around, and here's where I want to get to the part of the story about wisdom. Wisdom's an interesting thing because... Some of you are going to be told if you go to college, you're going to be smart. <coughs> no. I started attending college again about four years ago. I'm sitting in my, my algebra class. I love telling this story because folks, they kept asking me at the office over at OSUIT, how did you get this many college hours? Because I, at that point, I was around getting close to 60 hours of college. And they asked me, how did you get this much college without taking algebra? I looked at it and said, real simple. I didn't enroll in. <coughs> I mean, it doesn't take a lot of wisdom to figure that out. If you don't like algebra and you don't like math, don't enroll in it. Well, I finally got enrolled in this algebra class over at OSUIT. And of course, I knew nothing about algebra. I didn't do well in high school with it. And I'm sitting in class with students. It wound up, we started out with almost 20 students, and we wound up with eight of us in this algebra class. And I thought, I'm in trouble. Matter of fact, the instructor almost asked me to leave the class. She said, I know you're in trouble, but there's one thing, one reason I left you in this class. And I asked her, I said, what was that? She said, you had a determination that you were going to get 
the fruit was quite a Wow. It wasn't that I was smart. Wisdom isn't always being the smartest. Wisdom isn't always being the best. Wisdom is using what strengths you have. See, when I look at this story and I read about a fellow by the name of Zophar, the uh, friend of Job, and he comes in and he says, Should a multitude of words go unanswered, and a man full of talk be judged right? Should you babble? Should your babble silence men? And when you mock, shall no one shame you? For you say, My doctrine is pure. And I am clean in God's eyes. But oh, that God would speak and open his lips to you and that he would tell you the secrets of wisdom. For he is manifold in understanding. Know that no man, that God exacts of you less than your guilt deserves. I started reading about wisdom and this verse jumps out. And I know probably folks are sitting around going, Job? To a scene of Christ. Why not? I know watching, looking across this crowd, I see a whole bunch sitting on the front. One, two, three, four, There's at least what we call ten smart ones. They're called valedictorians. And I know there's a group right over here to my left. And there's about four. Well, there's about eight. If I can correctly here. Eight salutatorians. They're almost smart. <laughs> but you want, to, you want me to show you wisdom? We had a class of about 100, the one I graduated out of. I think we started out with like 112, and, and, and I'm going to tell you where I went to school, you'll say, man, you, just, you don't have an education if you went to that school. And so I graduated from high school, and I was probably about out of 100 students. I kind of fell right in the middle of the bunch, somewhere around 50, 54. But let me show you wisdom. I married the salutatorian of the class that graduated before me. <laughs> and you know what that did for me? That created some of the smartest grandkids you've ever met in your life. <laughs> How do I know that? Except a little, can I tell one grand, grandchild story? Is that okay with you guys? Uh-uh. Really? No, the one behind you is the one above. It don't matter, I'm preaching. I tell them in my church, I got the mind glass, so don't worry about it. It's a real short story. We're in the mall Saturday afternoon for Mother's Day with my, with my youngest son. I had bought my grandson a little toy to play with, and, and, and they wouldn't let him open it. They said, well, if you open it, you can take one thing out of it, you can carry it with you. Well, no, he wasn't going to do that. He wanted everything. So we left it in the package. We said something about not going through the store that I bought that in, and, and my grandson heard that. I didn't think anything about it, but we're walking toward the exit to leaving the mall. I'm going to show you how smart my grandson is. There is a police officer. Comes in, the, he's walking down the, the, the hallway there. And my little grandson walks over to the police officer and says, Hey, ball cop. <laughs> this guy's carrying a gun. He goes, Hey, Mr. Ball cop, my papa bought this for me, and we can't go back through the store because they don't, he doesn't have the receipt for it, but we're going to go out this way. <laughs> I just kept walking. <laughs> I'm not his papa right now. I looked at his dad and I said, you're on your own. If you say I'm yours, I'm with your line. I don't know you. Wisdom. I know you're, you're getting a little more nervous. And, 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 and if you folk knew how much I love to preach, you would be fearful at this moment. Because there's a lot of good things that, and one reason I laid this down is because it's safer. That I don't have notes in front of me because I, I just want to kind of elaborate on a couple of things. Wisdom has two sides. 
As a matter of fact, that's why I titled this, The Two Sides of Wisdom. There is all kinds of wisdom out there. You guys have learned a lot of things to this point. Some of you have learned how to get by. Some of you, probably as most of us guys with certain teachers, you learned how to finesse the system. You know what I'm talking about. Friends, I was a teacher's pet in one class. I never did anything in an A. I never showed up to class. How did you do that, Richard? I was the editor of the sports page of our, of our high school newspaper, and I never went to class except when, she, when Mrs. Barrett would catch me out of class, go down the hall, and she'd look at me and say, hey, you have to be in class tomorrow. We're taking a test. I said, a test? Over what? Well, you should have come to class. I still made her to class because she thought I was Mr. Smart Guy. Of course, it didn't hurt that I was the quarterback of our high school football team. And uh, halfway decent athlete, average. Back in the day, I used to think I was really something. But see, wisdom is that thing. You've learned some things. You've learned how to get by. That sounds like wisdom. Sounds good. And it works. Sometimes it'll work for you. Until you go back to college and you take algebra 40 years. See, it was 40 years from the last algebra class to my college algebra class that I took. I'm looking at this stuff and I'm going, oh, you know, I started. But I had seven other students in there that were, all, that were all less than 25 years of age. And they must have looked at me as a football. And they said, we're going to get you through this, Mr. Jenkins. And every time the teacher would say something, and I was like, Man, I don't get that. One of them would turn around, or somebody sitting by me would go, hey, here's how you do this. Forget this, forget that. And, and, and the teacher's looking at it going, you guys are right. I got through college algebra with a C. I'm sitting right now with the college that I've got at about a 3.2 grade average. And I'm in my 50s. <coughs> See, wisdom is learning what you love and loving what you learn. Job was questioned. You talk a lot, Job, about what you know and what you understand, but, but you really, you're just making a lot of noise, and I'm about to shut down, okay? I know some of you don't worry. I, I promised myself I'd quit at 730. Of course, the uh, music department messed us up. We had, we had it all really figured out really well, didn't we? Thank you. All the youth masters are sitting here going, yeah, we got drafted up here. <laughs> we were going to sit back there and we're like, uh-uh. We've got to work on this thing with these other pastors in town. This is just, uh, we're going to, well, we're getting ready today also, we don't care. <laughs> we're sitting down the road, you can go somewhere else. Somewhere like, uh, yeah, we're up north there, north of Tulsa. Two things in closing. There's earthly wisdom, wisdom that we gain. I listened to somebody the other day talk about experience. We learn a lot of things through experience. You learn that if you put your hand on a fire, it's going to burn. You learn if you drink coffee without making sure. You know, McDonald's got in trouble with this because the coffee was so hot that people were burning. But you, you learn a few things through experience. It doesn't take too many experiences to learn that certain things, I don't know. But this fellow made a statement that really rings out tonight. If God would only speak, I'm not going to tell you what you know about God or what you need to know about God. You're 18, 19, 17. I think there's any 20 year olds in this crowd. Tyler. Right. Okay. I picked on Tyler. You know, I learned a long time ago, here's wisdom. If you're going to pick on somebody, pick on the biggest guy in the crowd. If you pick on the biggest guy, everybody else will leave you alone. Because if you ain't afraid of the big guy, nobody else is going to be afraid of you. But God's wisdom is this. It's there if we'll listen to it because here's the thing, God speaks. 
God speaks through His Word. God speaks through preachers. And as I've said many times, guys, every once in a while, I listen to the close. Every and I, and I, I promise y'all, I better than I do. I keep saying that so I get one more point in. It's like the preacher keeps saying, uh, as I close. And after 15, as I close, you're like, he's not going to close. <laughs> every once in a while, though, I want you to get this. Every once in a while, mom and dad are right. I want to show. I know parents are sitting out there going, really, preacher? Just, just, just once in a while? Hey, you all been around long enough. You know, by the time you get about 30, guess what? You just became very, very brilliant. Everything you've taught them to this point is going to come back. And you'll realize. You see, wisdom says even when mom and dad are wrong, they're right. That's just the way the Ten Commandments were written. Honor your mother and father. I didn't say they're right all the time. But even when they're wrong, they're still right. Wisdom has two sides to it tonight, folks. If you listen to some wisdom, you'll be okay. You'll make it. But if you really want to make it in life, try the wisdom that God gives you and see where that takes you. If our young lady will come by the name of Brooklyn, you're come. Everybody's been waiting on Brooklyn to show up. Because that means the preacher's done. <laughs> Seniors, let me say, it's a good honor and privilege not only to speak to you, but to watch some of your lives over the last four years. Sitting in the booth, sitting on the sidelines, watching you participate, do things, your great crowd. And I've loved watching you all these, all these years. And hopefully we'll get to see you doing some things down the road. So, what this is. Please bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us be here today. Thank you for all the blessings you have given us. Please guide us through this new journey that we are about to take in our life. Let everyone have a safe trip home. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. And there is no formal dismissal. If some of you need to take pictures, feel free. We are going to do this like church. We uh, You can go home, stay and visit, stay and turn out the lights. Whatever you feel like doing, you're dismissed this evening.